Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com. Here, here once, no, not even once again. Here I'm in the space that will someday be my shop. I guess we did talk about putting the lights in here. But uh, anyway, I'm working on some items for the house, and it's given me an opportunity to play around again with these inexpensive track saws. I purchased the Wen track saw. My sister purchased the Craig. And um, I thought I'd go ahead and bring you along on a few cuts I need to make. I'm cutting some very thin eighth inch masonite. I'm also cutting some, some old pine, just truing up one edge, leaving another edge natural. And um, I'm coming to some pretty strong opinions on these two saws and thought I'd bring you along and maybe share my conclusions with you. Hey, before I do that, um, I, I just would love for you to comment down below. Do you own a track saw, yes or no? And if the answer is yes, what do you have? What model and do you like it? And if the answer is no, are you thinking about getting one? So drop down there and answer that while I play. So I just ran into an unexpected uh, difference between these two. Um, I don't know why I hadn't noticed this before. I'm working with the, uh, the Craig saw plugged directly into a receptacle. I swap out to use the Wen saw and was surprised how much shorter the cord is. So let's, let's figure this out. We'll lay these side by side and we'll just extend these cords. We'll grab a tape measure. And, oh, I'm, I'm already out of cord here on the, on the Wen saw. In fact, how much longer is this? The, <laughs> from that distance back, the wind goes it's twice the length. I'm sorry, twice the length as the as the wind. How long is this? This is a uh, real life from the saw to the plug. May, maybe 77 inches. Um, big advantage right there for the Craig. With one section of the wind track, we certainly can. I have two sections of track. Wonderful. We'll definitely use the two sections on the length of this cut. Hey, I had that set up for a three quarter inch cut. Of course that cut really well. <laughs> that short cord is really a pain in the situation. I needed an extension cord out here. Got my two tracks together. There's still still a bit of a rough ride at the seam here. Um, it's kind of unseemly, if you will. Got a little bit of a step. It's only connected at these two points in the rail, and that allows for a little bit of misalignment between the two halves. So you might see a bit of a of a road bump there. Has my opinion changed on either of these saws? Not really. I mean, again, I like several features of the Craig. I like that it has a riving knife. I like that um, it kind of sort of feels like the blade's on the correct side, but then there are times where it doesn't feel like it's on the correct side. Um, for me, I would want to be able to put my fence on the piece that I'm keeping and have the waste cut away. But there are some times where I, to do that puts me in an awkward position with the Craig. So I don't know how to settle that. Just sort of a weird thing. And maybe because I was used to using the Festool saw, I kind of got used to the way that configuration works. Now, here's my biggest gripe. This is going to be really petty, but here it is. You'll notice how when you set the depth of cut here with the Craig, look at the white markings on the black surface. Super easy to set the depth of cut. Check it out on the wet while the, the knob and the indicator are orange, the markings are black on black. I'm gonna have to go over that with one of those white paint markers to bring those numbers out. 
but uh, I could probably buy a whole bunch of those markers for less than $200. <laughs> Again, the long cord on the Craig is amazing. However, I have extension cords, so that's not really that great of an advantage. I'm going with the win, sticking with my guns. Don't forget to answer the question I asked at the beginning of the video, uh, and we'll do a follow-up to uh, address your questions, comments, and cheap shots in a few days. Make it a great week.